I'm also uh, wearing uh, the uh, green uh, uh, tie of the Irish presidency because I like it. Uh, and I like it uh, in a, also in a more political way. Uh, Ireland, uh, it's a, a relationship that we appreciate a lot in, in Bucharest and the former uh, Irish ambassador in Bucharest, which is present, and I, I say hello because we had an excellent uh, cooperation at that time. It's true in my former capacity as uh, uh, chairperson of the Foreign Affairs Committee of the Romanian Senate and having uh, very good contacts with the committees on the European affairs and uh, uh, foreign affairs, the external relations of the Irish uh, Parliament. Uh, we share uh, uh, similar uh, assessments, uh, similar interests, European and Euro-Atlantic interests, Rom both Romania and Ireland. So we have a very strong common basis for making the assessments, including on the Eastern uh, partnership, the topic that I, I want to present uh, today. Uh, and this is the appropriate moment because we are speaking about Ireland, having the presidency of uh, the, uh, the Council of the European Union, and uh, we are speaking about the former uh, chairperson of the, the OSE. So this is a subject that, uh, which is dealt uh, uh, with professionalism here in Dublin. Uh, why uh, why uh, mentioning this uh, topic here in the, uh, at the western end of Europe uh, and uh, speaking about the, the opposite end of the European continent, uh, the east? Um, despite the geographical distance, uh, according to our assessment, there are very important and serious topics which are relevant and key points of interest also for the western countries. And I want to make the reference because some of the topics that are having a, an impact and an influence also of the points of interest, and we are speaking about political and strategic and economic interests of the Western countries, including, uh, including Ireland. We are speaking about uh, a region, the eastern part of, uh, of Europe, uh, where you will find uh, uh, serious, uh, important uh, political uh, interests, uh, serious security interests. You will find uh, protracted uh, conflicts. You will find sec energy security, serious interests. So things which are very relevant for the European agenda. Of course, also for the Irish uh, presidency. Uh, this is why uh, uh, it's a good opportunity for me to uh, underline some aspects related to what we are calling, uh, starting with four years ago, the Eastern Partnership of the European Union, a form of cooperation which uh, includes uh, uh, the Republic of Moldova, Ukraine, uh, Azerbaijan, Armenia, Georgia and uh, Belarus. Uh, but I will start uh, very briefly mentioning the fact that uh, also for us, not only for us, for, for Romania, uh, when speaking about the Eastern Partnership, we are making reference in reality to the European political project from the beginning. Uh, and uh, we are making this reference because according to the EU treaty, uh, one of the articles is making the reference to the historic importance of ending the division of the European continent. This is still a consequence of the Second World War, uh, a period when, for instance, in our case, nobody asked us, the Romanians, if we want to stay on the other side of the world, on the same boat, in the same boat with Stalin, instead of staying with uh, Churchill, De Gaulle, and some other big, important European, Western European leaders. And it was a history that provoked some consequences within also our society, uh, within our different generations. And uh, I can tell you as a Romanian that we still have in our mind uh, the expectation of our uh, fathers or grandfathers and grandmothers saying that uh, uh, we are sure that the, the Americans will come, will free us, and so on. In the 50s, this was the 
fundamental expectation of the Romanian society that was aband abandoned on the other side of the, of the world. This was transferred by generation by generation to the youngsters. This is why the possibility of the enlargement of the European Union also with the Central Eastern European countries, also with Romania, was first of all a historic moral act that was uh, something that legitimately we were expecting. But when speaking about the, the separation and the, the division lines in Europe, we are not uh, looking to the Eastern partners just from uh, a perspective of uh, simple cooperation. Because for those who have uh, European identity, European expectations, and they're performing the, the right uh, reforms according to our sets of values, democratic values, I think this is a legitimate political assessment that we have to offer them the possibilities to advance through this European vision. Not everybody in the Eastern Partnership have the interest of being sometime in the future even member of the European Union. It will not happen in any case or tomorrow. Not everybody has the interest or let's say the vocation, but at least for those who have the vocation, the European vocation and the European clear interest and identity and once again fulfilling the criteria, the European perspective is something that must be taken into consideration. This is our uh, assessment to express very briefly uh, and this is a very important, a very sensitive topic in a European, uh, European Union which is uh, today concentrating on how to manage properly the economic and social crisis, how to manage properly the enlargement proper process or not, how to deal with some other tough uh, things, migration and, and so on. But for the Central Eastern European countries, I think this is a very profound subject while speaking about the European political project. Um, and this is also a subject where we are, of course, having a totally different attitude while looking to some uh, European developments that in a still complicated Europe are reflecting xenophobic attitudes, populistic attitudes, things that uh, we don't agree and uh, we, we don't share. Uh, of course, as uh, newcomers in, uh, in Europe, maybe we are still more enthusiastic about uh, Europe, but we are Europeans and we are interested that the European sets of values to continue to, to be enlarged, to, to continue to be an example and to be taken also by some other nations. This is why on the merits, the Eastern Partnership, I think, is very important. We are interested to have on our Eastern neighborhood stability, peace, good cooperation, regional cooperation, more prosperity, and at the foundation, the rule of law, human rights, democracy, rules, European rules, to be part of the philosophy of those societies. And for the future, we will see. And uh, when uh, speaking about uh, about uh, the Eastern Partnership. Uh, there are different uh, speeds and manners and performances of those uh, countries. It's, this is why, for instance, we established uh, the level of, uh, of the European uh, Union uh, and the European capitals and Brussels, uh, the principles of uh, making the distinction on the basis of the individual performance and on the principle of more for more. If you are doing more, if you are performing better, it's a good thing and it's a correct thing from us, from the Europeans, to respond properly. Uh, we are in the middle of a, of a process uh, uh, we're discussing uh, uh, about uh, what will happen in the next uh, uh, summit dedicated to the Eastern Partnership, uh, the so-called Vilnius Summit in November under the future presidency, the Lithuanian presidency. And uh, you are perfectly aware about the fact that uh, uh, some of the countries are in the Eastern Partnership are negotiating uh, uh, the uh, association agreement. They are negotiating the free trade agreement. 
they are discussing about uh, the, the visas. So it's in the same time the political association, but also the economic association to our uh, Western uh, European uh, system of, of, of values. And uh, the last uh, European Council, uh, in uh, its conclusions, stated inter alia as targets, as obje objectives, uh, the conclusion of the, uh, the negotiations uh, for the association agreement with the Republic of Moldova until the summit in Vilnius, uh, the possible signature of this agreement with Ukraine on the occasion of the Vilnius summit, uh, also the finalizing uh, or advancing uh, good progress of uh, negotiations with uh, Armenia, with uh, Georgia, with Azerbaijan. I can tell you that uh, looking uh, forward to different uh, concrete uh, aspects, I will, I will start uh, with, uh, with Ukraine. We had very recently in the margin of the uh, uh, Foreign Affairs Council in, in Brussels, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the European Union, a discussion on the so-called Group of Friends of uh, Ukraine. Uh, co-sponsored by Slovakia and uh, by, by Poland with uh, the new Minister of uh, Foreign Affairs of Ukraine. Uh, there is interest of having uh, good and a closer cooperation based on the respect and the implementation of the criteria. This was valid for uh, everyone. Uh, of course, there are topics, sensitive topics that we are perfectly aware. Speaking about justice, in Brussels, the formula that is used is the selective justice, speaking about some other important things that were reflected in uh, the conclusions of the, uh, the Council in last December. The expectation is that the Ukrainian authorities advance in respecting these recommendations for having the possibility of the signing of the signature of the agreement in November. The agreement was finished it was negotiated and initialized already with Ukraine. So it's only a political decision right now to be taken or not if the signature will take place. There are different approaches in our EU family. There are different assessments. All in all, the Europeans are interested to have a good cooperation with, uh, with Ukraine. But on the nuances, I can tell you that uh, you will see a much firm attitude from some of the member states on the need of the respect of the rules and the criteria, and maybe some nuanced positions which are more political and more strategic poss possibly, we can uh, mention them like this, from some of the Central Eastern European countries which are already member of the European Union. I will give uh, the example of Romania. Ukraine is the biggest neighbor of our country. So we have a strategic interest that Ukraine will be step by step or we share step by step this common set of values. It's not simple. And uh, being the eastern border of both EU and NATO, Romania is in the position to understand in a more nuanced way the fact that when we are speaking about the former Soviet Union space, where the things are more complex than it was the case with the Central Eastern European countries, I think we, we, are, we have the temptation to, to look to this situation in a more strategic way. So we are open for the signature of, uh, you, uh, of the, the agreement without diminishing the expectations for the fulfillment of the criteria. We are not negotiation, negotiating the, the criteria, but I think maybe to have to take the proper political decision at the appropriate political moment. This is, uh, let's say, putting in, in, in balance all those, those things. So we are part of those countries which are supportive in November from this, uh, for this uh, act. The Republic of Moldova. Uh, you, you made a reference in the introductory, in your introductory uh, presentation. Uh, of course, Romania is uh, in the first line uh, for the giving the support for the European path of uh, the Republic of Moldova. We have a common 
uh, origin, we are speaking the same language with the uh, major part of the population in the Republic of Moldova. And uh, we have a great sympathy for the efforts and uh, the things that were done by, uh, uh, by the Republic of Moldova in the last years. And in general terms, the major part of the EU member states are saying that the Republic of Moldova was, uh, all those years until now, the, uh, the most active uh, uh, partner that made uh, the most important progress from this point of view. Um, the discussion uh, uh, today is related to if or not to have the signature of the agreement in Vilnius or to have at least the, to, to have the initialing uh, process of the agreement, association agreement and uh, of course finishing also the free trade agreement. And I think uh, uh, according to the assessments, if the negotiations will finish under the Irish presidency and Ireland uh, played already and can play to continue to play a very positive role from this point of view, I think there are uh, chances. It's true that uh, during the past weeks uh, uh, some, uh, some political, uh, uh, political, uh, and a political crisis uh, appeared once again uh, within the, the coalition. It's not necessarily something new. And I think uh, during all those years, all the time in the end, there were political resources to find a solution and to assure the stability and the continuation of the European project in, in the Republic of Moldova. Very recently, three of our, uh, my, my colleagues, uh, ministers of foreign affairs uh, uh, from three uh, EU member states visited Chisinau. Uh, on the margin of the next Foreign Council in Brussels on 11 of March, uh, uh, I will host uh, together with my French <coughs> counterpart uh, the so-called group of friends of the Republic of Moldova precisely for having this political dialogue and encouraging them to continue to ensure stability, the political stability of the country and to continue the, the reforms. Uh, it is important because once again, we are at the eastern border of EU and NATO. So we have a fundamental interest of stability in the region, of uh, peaceful processes, of the continuation of the European process in that country, in that region. Uh, so it's something very transparent from uh, our side and it's something very legitimate from this uh, point of view. On, uh, on Georgia, uh, very fast I was uh, uh, part of the, uh, the group, uh, five uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs that visited uh, Georgia before the last elections. Even at that moment, we, we launched uh, in, uh, in Tbilisi the European expectations for having uh, uh, a correct uh, electoral process and to, to, uh, to give the support for the political forces engaged in the European and Euro-Atlantic uh, uh, process. Um, it's not very easy once again, we are speaking about uh, still a complex, complicated region uh, with the protracted uh, conflict in, uh, in uh, Georgia, uh, but uh, once again Romania is constantly, constantly supportive for the European and Euro-Atlantic path of uh, Georgia. This is not a surprise. Uh, so we will continue to, to, uh, to adopt this um, attitude also through the exchanges, also through the uh, expertise and support for the European integrate, European processes, uh, also through the parliamentary exchanges and, uh, and uh, so on. Uh, we hope also to have uh, uh, Armenia's finalization of the facilitation and readmission agreement and uh, also very good progress uh, uh, and uh, advance of the negotiation process with Azerbaijan. Uh, these are countries in a, an important region. There are some situations where Romania uh, has uh, important uh, uh, economic uh, cooperation processes like uh, uh, related, for instance, to the energy security. For us, one of the important uh, projects on energy security is related to the uh, Nabucco, Nabucco West Corridor, which is linking uh, Azerbaijan through Georgia, uh, going to Romania and Hungary. This is something that is related to diversification of the sources uh, for the energy uh, suppliers of, uh, of uh, our region, 
including uh, uh, Romania. Um, so this uh, this uh, year, it's really an uh, uh, a year that uh, can decide can decide for many other years after this. Uh, this is why the Irish presidency is so important. This is uh, why the, the, the next uh, Lithuanian presidency is uh, important. Uh, because once again, on one side, uh, we have a, a European Union that still has problems. Still has problems. We saw the last discussions. I was uh, in the Romanian delegation. Uh, at the last European Council while discussing the financial uh, framework for the next cycle of the European Union. I saw the different interests, I saw uh, different uh, uh, manners of promoting the national interests. I uh, didn't hear, hear unfortunately, uh, any reference to the principles, to the values, to the principles of solidarity within the European Union, only pragmatic approaches. So in this complex and still complicated European Union, that I'm confident that in the future will refresh the spirit, nevertheless, we must speak and we must find the solutions to advance in some other important processes which are part of, on the, of the project of the European Union. We must speak to continue to speak about the enlargement. We must continue to speak and to advance on the Eastern Neighborhood Policy, because otherwise we will uh, finish to have a very selfish European Union, to speak about only the huge uh, invasion of migrants coming, I don't know, from East, from Central Eastern European countries, from Romania, from Bulgaria, from outside, and we will start to forget what is the foundation of the European Union. If we will not continue to put in place also our commitments concerning the enlargement in Southeastern Europe, in the Balkans, we will make the mistake to choose another alternative than stability, peace, progress in the Balkans. Unfortunately, today, the Balkan region is in general terms, or became a predictable region. This is a huge achievement now in the history. Because tomorrow, or if not tomorrow, the day after tomorrow, the countries in the region will be part of the European and or Euro-Atlantic family. This became a predictable region. This is a huge achievement. And Romania is very supportive for the continuation of the enlargement process in the region. But in, in the same time, we have the Eastern Partnership, a less predictable in large region. We are interested in more predictability. We are interested in having a good cooperation. And this is why step by step, at least with those partners who are making reforms, who are very serious, and despite the difficulties, despite the difficulties, they are doing, committing, and they are having progress, I think it's also uh, a serious attitude from our side to be constant on our approach in what is the philosophy of the European uh, project uh, and uh, the, the values which must prevail on our continent. So this is the essence of uh, the position and the philosophy and, and the vision of the Romanian authorities and Romania in this apparently very, uh, very uh, 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 distance the uh, region uh, in the eastern part, a uh, big distance from the western side, but which in reality is very close and can provoke important consequences. And I think when discussing, by the way, about the concerns of uh, some western countries like UK about migration after 1st of uh, uh, January 2014, if the politicians will don't understand that we have to be active in trying to help things which are happening somewhere in the eastern side or somewhere, somewhere else than Europe, those the same politicians will discover that really they will have problems on their national territory the day after tomorrow. So I think we have to be active there 
and to give the support there to try to have an enlarged region of uh, stability and uh, progress and uh, prosperous and uh, sharing the same uh, uh, political and democratic values. Uh, thank you very much for, uh, for your attention and of course I'm uh, waiting for uh, uh, the answers uh, for the questions and I'll, I'll do my best to give uh, the proper answers. Thank you.